Welcome to another video of online learning with me, Ma'am Zen. Our topic for today is actually about chemical bonds. So before we proceed with your chemical bonding, let's have a recap of your electron shells. Okay? So remember that when you see the atomic number, it actually gives you the number of electrons, okay? So electrons actually vary in the amount of energy they possess and they occur at certain energy levels or electron shells, okay? Now, these electron shells would actually tell you how your atom would behave when it encounters another electron or another atom, okay? So electrons are placed in shells according to rules. So first, first rule, the first shell can hold only up to two electrons, and each shell after that can hold up to eight electrons, okay? So, this rule is actually known as your octet rule. Now, your outermost electron shell, again, can hold up to eight electrons, while the first electron shell can hold two electrons, okay? So, our first electron, or first element, we have hydrogen. Okay, so its atomic number is 1, therefore, you only have one electron for that, okay? So, your carbon has an atomic number of 6, therefore, it has 6 valence, uh, it has 6 electrons, okay? So, 2 would be the innermost electrons or the core electrons, and then you have 4 outermost or your valence electrons, okay? Now, again, according to octet rule, atoms tend to gain, lose, or share electrons so that they could have eight electrons in total, okay? Now, carbon here would like to, what? Gain, lose, or share? What do you think? Okay, now for carbon, so it has, since it has one, two, three, four, it has four outermost electrons, it needs four more electrons, okay? So, carbon would like to gain four electrons. Now, for our nitrogen, its atomic number is seven. So, it has um, two core electrons and five outermost electrons or five valence electrons. Therefore, your nitrogen would like to gain three electrons, okay? And lastly, our oxygen with the atomic number of eight, so, it has two core electrons, as you can see in the picture, meaning when I say core electrons, it refers to the innermost electrons, okay? And then you have how many valence electrons? So, if you're going to count, okay, so you have here one, this would be one, two, then you have three and four, five, and then you have six. Six valence electrons, so your oxygen now would want to gain two electrons, okay? So they need to gain a certain number of electrons so that they could satisfy the octet rule, okay? Now, why are electrons important? Again, these are important for bonding, okay? So elements have different electron configurations, and again, it is needed for different levels of bonding. Okay, now how do we usually express your um, elements when bonding? So usually, we use the electron dot structures or your Lewis dot structures, okay? So these are actually symbols of atoms with dots. They represent the valence shell electrons, okay? So here we have for your hydrogen, our example, our first example would be hydrogen, okay? So, hydrogen here would have one dot to represent one electron. For your helium, so it has, its atomic number is two, so you have here one and two dots. Okay? So, in writing your dots for the structure, you need to follow our Hunt's rule. Okay? So, you first need to distribute the first, um, you need to distribute the four electrons first, first four, before you proceed with the next pair. Okay, so let's say let's go to nitrogen. Okay, so our trend here, so its atomic number is seven. So we start from top. Okay, so you have here, so you have one dot here, then another dot, 
Here's your second dot. Okay, then you have your third dot here. Fourth. And then you could go back here at the top. Or you could um, go back or go at any side. Okay. So if I have, let's say this is my unknown um, element. So you could start putting your dot anywhere. Okay, but for me, for my con um, for convenience, you start at the top. So you have my first election here. Then I have my second. Pardon my writing. Then you have um, my third election. Then you have your fourth here. Then I have my fifth here, fifth valence election. Then you have your sixth. Then your seventh and your eighth somewhere there okay so that's how you write your um electron dot structures or your lewis dot structures i hope that's clear so for this learning check i want you to pause the video and try to answer this so consult your periodic tables if you have them so these are two questions so first your unknown element with one dot would be the electron dot formula for what element Okay, so choices are sodium, potassium, and aluminum. Then for second question, this um, electron dot formula would be for what atom or what element? Okay, choices would be boron, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Okay, now, how would you know the answer, the correct answer? So, since we are given, okay, so since we are given this concept, okay, since you have one dot, so, we already know that the valence electron of this unknown element would be 1. Okay? So, you now consult your periodic table, check which one, which among these different elements would belong to group 1. Okay? Now, for the second question, so you now have how many um, valence electrons? So, let's count. Let's have 1. We have 1 here. 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay? So, you look which among these choices belongs to group 5. Okay? Now, you may comment your answers below so that we could check if you understood our discussion about your Lewis dot structures. Okay? Now, let's go to the different types of chemical bonds. So, our first type of chemical bond would be your ionic bond, okay? So, this is the bond formed between two ions by the transfer of electrons, okay? So, keyword for ionic bond is transfer, okay? Now, it is formed between atoms of metals and non-metals with very different electronegativity. And again, they produce charged ions, okay? So, we have two types of your ions, your cation, which are the positively charged ions, and we have your anions, which are your negatively charged particles or ions. Okay, so examples of compounds with ionic bonds, you have your sodium chloride or your NaCl, your calcium chloride, and your potassium oxide. Okay. So for ionic bonds, so here you see now the transfer of your electron from sodium to your chlorine. Okay. And you see there is the electrostatic attraction between these two elements or between these two ions okay so as you could also observe originally they don't have charges but once there is the attraction they are now charged your sodium becomes positively charged your chlorine becomes negatively charged okay so how do we get these charges so let's have another image of your sodium chloride bonding so here as you could see this is the free electron of your sodium, so it could be transferred to your chlorine. So from an atom, it now becomes an ion, okay? So how do we get the charges? Let's find out, okay? So before we proceed with the computation, you could also imagine now two dogs, okay, to represent now your ionic bond, okay? So there's one big, greedy thief dog who has stolen the bones or the electron okay anyway so the formation of ions from metal so ionic 
compounds result when metals react with non-metals. Okay? So, metals lose electrons to match the number of valence electrons of their nearest noble gas. Okay? So, positive ions form when the number of electrons are less than the number of your protons. Okay? So, for group 1 metals, they become um, ions with a positive 1 charge. For group 2 metals, they are charged as positive 2. Okay? So, for group 13 metals, you have positive 3. Okay? Now, formation of your sodium ion. So, originally, here you have your sodium. Its valence electron is 1. So, once it started to bond, okay? So, we remove now this electron. So, minus E. So, the charge now would be positive 1. Okay? Why positive? Okay? So, this would now be the arrangement of your electron. So, innermost, we have 2. Your out your second layer, the second shell would have eight, and then the outermost would be having one electron. Okay, so from an atom, you have your 11 protons and 11 electrons. So we add them up positive 11 plus negative 11, answer is zero. Okay, so this is before the bonding. Now, once we transfer the electron. So, the arrangement now of your electrons, so you have two as the core um, electrons. Your second shell would have eight and then that's it. Okay, so total, so you have the 11 protons, then you now have 10 electrons, so we add them up to get the charge. So, positive 11 plus negative 10 or minus 10, you have now positive 1. Okay, I hope that is clear. Now, let's see the formation of your magnesium ion, okay? So, magnesium actually belongs to group 2. So, magnesium would have two valence electrons at the start. So, the trend or the pattern of your electrons, two at the core, then you have eight at the second shell, and then you have two as your valence electrons, okay? So, before bonding, it would have 12 protons and 12 electrons, so adding, adding them up. So, positive 12 plus negative 12, that would be 0, okay? So, for the magnesium ion now, since the magnesium atom could release or could transfer two electrons, so it char its charge now would be positive 2. So, how did that happen? We'll do the same with your um, previous example. So, you now have 12 protons and then 10 electrons and then we'll arrive at positive 2. Okay? Now, these are some of the typical ions with your positive charges or cations. So, yung group 1, they're positively charged, your hydrogen, lithium, sodium, and potassium. For group 2, we have your magnesium, calcium, strontium, and barium. Okay? So, for group 13, example natin is si aluminum. Okay? So, let's have another learning check. So, I want you to pause the video to challenge yourself and then let's go back to see your answers. Okay? Make sure you have your product tables with you as you start solving this or start answering this. Okay? So, first question is asking you of the number of valence electrons in aluminum. Okay? So, the second question is what's the change in electrons for the octet for your aluminum and what would be the ionic charge of your aluminum okay now for the answers let's continue so the number of valence electrons in aluminum would be three electrons since it belongs to your um group 13 elements okay now the change in electrons to achieve now the octet rule it needs to lose the three electrons and atomic charge now of your aluminum would be positive three okay so, let's proceed to the second type of our chemical bond. Let's have covalent bonds, okay? So, your covalent bonds are bonds formed by the sharing of your electrons, okay? So, this occurs between non-metallic elements of similar electronegativity, okay? So, here are the examples, your oxygen, carbon dioxide, and others, okay? So, bonds in all polyatomic ions and diatomics are all covalent bonds, okay?
So, this is an animation of how your covalent bonds are actually formed, okay? So, as you could see, there's now the sharing of your electrons, okay? Now, let's have another example. There are actually two types of your covalent bonds. So, first, we have your nonpolar covalent bonds. Here, the electrons are shared equally. So, examples are your hydrogen and your oxygen. Then we have your polar covalent bonds where the electrons are shared but unequally. Okay? So that is why it is called polar. It has poles. Okay? So let's go to our example. Let's go to the image. So for your oxygen, so here you have two molecules. I mean you have two atoms of your um, oxygen so the yellow one and the purple one now the color would just be um, a representation so that you could see the valence electrons okay so let's see which one is participating in your um, bonding so first so our first um electron we have here one let's count then you have here our second then you have here the third electron valence electron Next, this would be the fourth one. Then the yellow one. This one would be the fifth. And then you have another six. Okay, so there, since there are six valence electrons, it needs to have two more. Okay, so we get the two from the purple oxygen. And the second oxygen. So this would be our seventh. And this would be our eighth electrons. Okay, now this satisfies our octet rule. Okay, now for our polar covalent bond, they have your water. As you could see, there is the separation of the charges, okay? So, you now here have the partially negative side, and here we have your partial positive side, okay? So, the attraction here is not really equal. So, we have here an equal sharing, okay? So, we also have another animation or an analogy. So, your polar covalent bonds, they are unevenly matched, but they are willing to share. Okay. So that's nice for polar covalent bonding. Okay, so here is a summary of the two types of your bonds. So first, we have here your ionic bond. So the ionic bond, there is no sharing, but rather there is a transfer of electrons. For a polar covalent bond, there is an equal sharing. And for your non-polar covalent bond, there is equal sharing of your electrons, okay? Now, let's have the last type of bonding. So, our last type would be your metallic bonds, okay? So, metallic bonds are bonds found in metals, obviously from its name. And it holds your metal atoms together very strongly, okay? So, they are formed between atoms of your metallic elements. So, this could be found, for example, in your sodium, iron, aluminum, and others, okay? Now, here is another um, representation for your metallic bonds. So, mellow dogs with plenty of bones to go around, okay? So, in the previous animations, the bones would uh, um, also represent the electrons, okay? Now, that would be all for our different types of chemical bonds. So, again, first, we have your ionic bond. So, in ionic bond, there is a transfer of electrons. Now, for covalent bonds, there is a sharing of electrons. So, we have two types. You have your polar, which has um, an unequal sharing of your electrons. Then, we have your nonpolar, which is the equal sharing of electrons. And last, we have your metallic bonds okay so i hope you learned something from this video so if you have questions feel free to comment them down below and we'll try to address them as soon as possible okay so i hope you learned something and see you in the next video bye